Welcome to another episode of the True Beast Podcast, brought to you by xdog.com, where you can find the world's greatest fitness and health enhancement harness for dogs, the X-Dog Fitness Vest. Exercising your dog has never been easier than with the X-Dog Fitness Vest. So if you're looking to invest into your dog's overall health, longevity, and well-being, be sure to check out xdog.com. And of course, my name is Stan Smith, and I got my partner, Mr. Trevor, uh, who uh, Mr. T-Fit himself, um, Fit Bully Kennels, if you haven't heard of him. Um, now you now you've heard of them. We're, we're on what, episode 25, 26, 27? Right, I think there's 27. 27. And not more. I think there's two that need to be uploaded, so it could be 28, but we're right around there. Yeah, and so the theme today is, you know, like the importance of, you know, like especially in the breeding community is kennel blindness. And, yeah. But I think you can, I don't know, would you call it personal blindness? I mean, all that, all that. You know, you want to do well, you want to, you want to be successful, but you have to be realistic, right? Yeah. You have to do the work, and you know, every now and then you're gonna get knocked down and fight in any sports. Yeah. Everybody didn't took a L. Well, like self honesty. So you know, this being episode 27, at first we fucking sucked. I mean, it wasn't <laughs> really that good. I mean, compared to what right now, you know, we keep fine tuning. We're bringing on better guests. The energy yeah. levels are different. Delivery, um, you know, the synergy between us. Yeah. You know, and being able to read each other's body languages, and and you know, I can look at you sometimes and be like, hey, take over this fucking question <laughs> type shit, and you can do it vice versa. <laughs> We can read each other better, and yeah. you know anything that you guys start out doing, you're gonna probably suck at it, you know. And being self honest and being aware of that, I think, is a superpower. Superpower it sets you up for real success. And you know, I tell people all the time, I build a lot of social media plans out for people. I said, I need you to write down 25 steps in terms of videos, and then I'm gonna build 75 videos from that, and then we're gonna drop a hundred videos just so you can find your voice. Yeah. So you, you work with you've worked with a lot of people. I mean, some yeah. of these people that are you know champions in ABKC. Yeah. Because you, your your vision and your your you you're going towards the bull breeds, right? And the bully breeds. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so um, you've built these relationships with people, and sometimes you've run into them, and they've never done any lives. They haven't done any type of marketing. They don't even have their businesses set up. Yeah. From after winning championships, because at the end of the day, man, your dog is a product and it's a brand. But eventually, right? Like, evolution is going to be vital. You know. I see. And this is the thing. Everybody normally gets some type of deal at any competition, right? Even if you're on a cooking show, you get kind of like some type of bunny or some reward. So the reward in the ABKC, unfortunately, is just a trophy. And there's a lot of money goes into campaigning a dog. Let's talk about that. Yeah. As far as campaigning a dog, on average, you know, because I had talked to a handler today, and to board, I mean, and I think I was getting some love, right? Just yeah. to board and, and train and to go handle the dog, it, it was about $1,500 a month. But I've also heard where it's a lot more than that, you know? And, and you think over a 12-month campaign. That's cheap, I feel like. It's God, super man. cheap. No, it's super it's cheap. Not, it's, it costs more to board a dog, uh, you know, at some doggy daycare. I know. That's what I'm saying. I, I felt like I was getting a lot of love on that. But at the same time, let's say a dog like, you know, Grand Champion Blue, I mean, could you imagine what it costs? I mean, you had talked about everybody who's involved and in, in, in what they I mean, invested look, into it. I'm not going to put the number out there for David's sake, and he didn't give me the hard number, but you know, when he looks at that that bottom line or he starts doing them taxes, yeah. he'd be like, man, there was a lot of money went into this very moment. Mm -hmm. um, and But the, here's the thing. Now you've got to take that moment and quantify it a thousand times because now your dogs want an Oscar. Yeah. What do you do with the Oscar? Well, everybody normally goes out and gets lead roles. People write movies around actors and, and so forth and so on. So, you know, part of it is creating a plan to move the whole Martinez family forward, being that they probably not going to get out of this dog thing anytime soon. And let's just keep it real, you know, self-honesty. You know, a lot of people in the dog game right now, they're not a legit business. And what I mean <laughs> is like they're not incorporated. So if you think about this, right, if you run your program like a business and you look at like the first three years, the food, the marketing, the campaigning, that can be written off. Absolutely. Because it's part Travel, of your business. All that stuff, man. Yeah. Dog food, yeah, the vet visits, everything can be written off. And I don't think a lot of breeders think about that. Hell, the marketing side, if you, like for me, you know, I do all of our videos and videography stuff, I could write all that off and go, you know, go right back to the kennel uh, because it is a legit business, a business that I run on, this, on the other side that, uh, you know, funds this one in a sense. Travel, right? As far oh, as not man. just not travel expense, but let's say you purchase a vehicle. Yeah. Right? That's a write-off. You wrap the vehicle. That's a write-off. And I, and I don't even go nowhere unless it's business-related or dog-related. Yeah. So every everything I do basically surrounded by these dogs can be 
re, re, reimbursed in a sense. Yeah. And so, you know, I think a lot of a lot of the reasons why you and I get along so well now is because <laughs> at first, you know, we kind of butt heads because we are very honest people, you know, yeah. and there's it's such far and few in between that and, it's and, very and I think that because so let's 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 really get into some of the, the gritty stuff so we can really paint a picture for these people. A lot of times when you're providing we'll say constructive criticism, there's two ways people embrace criticism. And, and there are the people who try to berate you, put you down, and want you to feel better, right? Yeah. They're malicious. And then you've got people who genuinely want to see you progress. Sure. So I know, uh, based on my first, you know, even involvement with Stan here, he had a group of individuals around who were gaslighting. Mm -hmm. And they would gas him up. So here's the thing. He had people that were vultures, and they, would, they wanted him to be successful so they could take from him. And I want him to be successful so he could give the world so much more. Yeah. So it's off-putting even when I'm like, hey, I don't think that's a good idea because everybody else will be like, oh, yeah, go for it because they don't care if he wins or loses. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I need you to win because we all got to win. Yeah. And that's not the best way to do it. Absolutely. So if he's heard nothing but basically gas for four or five years around a bunch of suckers, yeah. just to be clear, and then somebody comes, he's like, well, and then you got to really, when he processed it, he sent me some messages many times like, man, bro, you know, I really thought about what you said. That was, that was, that's right. And you then you have to like, let me get out of my own way. And trust me, me too. I told somebody this morning, I said, y'all think I don't make bad choices. I said, no, I got a few first phone calls so I don't lose it. I said, yeah. because I'll be, I'm just as irrational as the next person. I just have some people that I trust and can call to calm me the fuck down before I do something crazy. Yeah. And, and, and they just be like, Trev, you... You get you in a position to get that Kevin Hart money. Don't do, don't fuck it up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't don't fuck it up. So the the truth is is we all have a lot of growing to do. Mm -hmm. And if you really want to grow, you got to be around people who don't make you comfortable. Yeah, and I think that was really you know yesterday Josh who came in, he's yeah, a money coach. It was kind of it was very like it was refreshing to see two people who thought differently mm -hmm. from two different areas of life, right? Who didn't agree with everything, but could have hold a healthy conversation and respect each other's yeah. perspective you know Absolutely. and i think that's so lost now because it's like we're in this era where it's like well if you disagree with something oh you're a bad can't. person you're a bad person that's right? what it is it's like oh you're a bad human being because you don't like the things that i like you like fucking kill yourself hey follow some sharp <laughs> yeah i'm not going back and forth with you about no dumb shit and you know but it take a man to know a man and the man we we were you know honored in a sense to to communicate with and, and learn from yesterday. Yeah. Um, he's some, those are some of my favorite kind of people, the kind of people you can grow with and grow from. Yeah. And that experience. He'll tell you the same thing. Like he, he learned a lot from us. Yeah. And, yeah. And it's being able to know what you don't know yeah. and to go get that expert, the person who excels in that area there you to go. help enhance you, you know, and you know, um, rumor is there's a little controversy, <laughs> you know, from, from being self honest. And I think like from the last ABK she show, you know, like, there were some things that were said, right? Where it was like, well, in, in an episode or two ago, where it was like, well, I wasn't impressed. You know, I was not inspired, right? right. And, um, but that was your personal per perspective. And that's your personal opinion, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and so, why don't you kind of dial in on what you weren't, what didn't inspire you? Well, I'm, I'm a dog man, and I don't know if you guys know a lot. For, one, for those that are dog men and dog people, you need a dog that can do things. Yeah. And I know, I mean, I would say this in the past six months alone on the Frenchie side, I've heard stories and basically calculated $300,000 in losses just from people who've made poor choices and breeders and so-called mentors and a bunch of other stuff. That being said, when I'm looking at this dog, I'm a, I come from a bodybuilder space. There was a time where... I mean, they're just too damn big. Yeah. <laughs> they're just too damn big. You, you really struggle when you get too damn big. And some mm -hmm. of these dogs, as you guys are focusing on extremities, the dog's quality of life, man. I don't know if you've ever been in a position where you really can't breathe or you feel like you're suffocating. But imagine what you what some people are doing to these dogs, and that being their life start to finish. Yeah. So when I'm looking at the dog, <clears throat> the mobility, the functionality, the fact that I'm an active person, I like to go to Arbor Hill here in, in, in Dallas and many other nature preserves. I, I literally go to Arizona every two years just to hike Squaw Peak, South Mountain, and other mm -hmm. things. Imagine not being able to take your dog to do that. Yeah. You know what kind of pictures I could take or videos I could do if I got an active fucking dog? Yeah. So the fact that some of these dogs literally will die yeah. if you walk them two, three miles or put them in certain conditions, I'm not with that. So like I said, I wasn't inspired because I'm an active person. I like an active dog. Mm -hmm. I want a dog that can breathe, that can move, that does not struggle or suffer. Yeah. Um, because if you are a dog person, then you know if somebody told you you was dying, you'd be like, I'll be all right. But let something happen to your fucking dog. What's the first thing you do? You call the vet, emergency. You're running to take care of your dog. 
and I don't want to be in that place. And not just that, some people are in situations where they've got children, they've got yeah. you know family members who've grown attached to the dog, right? Yeah. And it really, they don't give a fuck how well it shows. Mm -hmm. They have a personal relationship with that dog because maybe they had a bad day and they were they were just fucking crying, and the dog came and was consoling them, and you know, like emotional support dogs in it's, a lot of way. You look, know, look, it, it happens every day. So my lack of of impress, and let me let me take it a step further. I'm a business person at the end of the day, and when I looked at the opportunity. I literally bumped into the person the so-called in charge of the whole thing and said, hey, is there a link I could send to my, my friends to watch? The, the, the process, let me be very clear and said, hey, we looked at the trophies place. There was trash, uh, there was chip bags, there were pop bottles. It, it just, it was disappointing. Now, this is not to say that there wasn't dogs there that impressed you. Yeah, right? no, it was just... I'm, I'm a blue fan. I literally, if you go back and listen to one episode, I said, hey guys, I hate to have to do this, but I've been waiting to shoot blue because I'm like a kid on Christmas. Yeah. I couldn't wait to get um, and shoot my buddy David and his people. I love Dooley. I'm not saying that wasn't impressive. I'm not impressed in a way that I want to go and create one of those dogs. Yeah. That's my thing. Do I love those dogs? Absolutely. I'll be shooting David, Dooley, and a bunch of other bullies. Fortuna, I'll be shooting a bunch of bullies. I'm not running from the bully. I'm just not creating the bully that was in that ring. Yeah. Not for me. Not for me. Yeah. And, you know, I think, you know... Being able to hear that, that that criticism is very important. I think there's a big lack of it in in not just the bully community, but in a lot of communities. You find it across every freaking dog community that there possibly is, and I'm sure there's other communities that are not dog related where people just they're surrounded by yes men or people who gaslight them, right? Yeah. And they just you know like it, it can I would say that you're kennel blind to your personal life, you yeah. know? Like if you're you're fucking off on your diet somebody is you're fucking off on your diet right yeah. you're not working hard enough you, you know people that's why i think it's so important to be surrounded by people man who are willing to challenge you oh yeah yeah, yeah. And, and then to keep in mind you got to be in a position to really want to challenge yourself and mind you i ain't talking about nobody's dog i ain't putting no dog down y'all yeah. do what y'all want to do with the dogs but as, as they say in church that's for me in this house we're gonna serve the lord yeah <laughs> but what i really said is i'm going to serve the nature of what a dog should be able to do and focus on the health and quality of life for my dogs specifically. So when I do put a dog in a home, I don't ever want that phone call. Hey, you know, I, I took him on a mile walk and, uh, you know, he's really got me worried. There's times I took a dog I own currently named Maya, took on a point four mile walk. It's one of my rules. The minute I get a puppy, I take him on a walk, see how far they can go. Yeah. And that's the sad part to be clear. Yeah. Like you have to go and these bullies, they have to see how far she could. There was a time where she come back at eight weeks old, I thought she was gonna die. I'm like, she's breathing so hard so even the video i posted of her jumping on my back and holding on the rope you know how much patience i had to have and conditioning and building up her everything just to get her to do that stuff yeah it's like man it's just not that easy and again i don't know how much you care about your dogs but i ain't getting no dog just to sit around my house yeah and I, you know i think this all goes in a lot of different areas you know i think right now in the past i don't know five, six years, you know, there's been a big pivot in challenging dog food companies, mm -hmm. you know, and how you feed your dog. And it's, you know, you'll, I've had people show me things from the vet where they're like, hey, I want to feed my dog raw diet, right? And they yeah. want to start feeding raw. And it'll, they'll get a letter saying, this is not recommended for the safety of your dog not to feed him raw, you know? Yeah. And it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's as natural as it could possibly get, all the health benefits, the science behind it's proven. But a lot of the consumers or dog owners, they don't understand that the veterinarians are owned by major companies <laughs> like mars and nestle and yeah. and so the show there and see royal canine and there's a hydrolyzed royal canine i'm like bro send me that info that's impossible yeah <laughs> it's not impossible but it's unrealistic to say the least in addition you got to figure like of course i mean you're talking a, a multi multi-billion dollar industry yeah. you know where shelf life is extremely important and if you stick there's no raw on shelf you know no. Like there's just, it's not there, you know? And so, it's, and think about it this way too, people. If you ever go get this, if you ever go and get um, the fresh bread from like a Sprouts or a Whole Foods, why is that bread bad in three days, but the bread you get from Wonder Bread is fucking a good for a week or two? Uh, yeah, Look right. at that mold and shit, the muffins even. You get them fresh ass muffins, you go get them packaged muffins like we used to do in the hood with the chocolate chip ones. Uh, <laughs> you go, you go, these muffins are fucking got mold on them in 72 hours. Yeah. And these other ones are good for 20, for well, a whole year. Yeah. That's a fucking problem. <laughs> yeah, especially when you look at like, you know, like I think they did like the, the McDonald's burgers, oh, you know? Yeah. It was like- Things I, don't even decompose. <laughs> and there are people putting that shit in their body. Yeah, and you're creating an, an infamous, AKA in, in a place state of inflammation, which, you know, breeds 
for forms of cancers. And again, you know, a dog hits its peak and then literally everything hits the fan. Like a dog hit 9, 10, 11 and boom, it goes to hell real fast, quick, yeah. you know. But, you know, improving your quality dogs optimal, not just good, but optimal. But if you guys aren't even pushing your dogs, then then you never go know what the dog can do and what to give the dog to help it recover. Mm -hmm. sustain its quality of life improve its its overall well-being yeah and it's not a lot of information out there there's like some but i think literally it's like 120 uh or if not under dog dietitians and and you know in the world yeah because it's just it's still new it's still yeah new. you know like uh, you read brought her up dr karen baker I, like, yeah you know like she just posted a few days ago about a dog living 30 years of age you yeah. know and the dog was fed correctly but it was out on the farm and, and doing what dogs need to do it was running about 12 and a half miles a day the dog living 30 years old and what does that help with when the first time when somebody gets parkinson what do they do they say hit things to help their bones stabilize when you have um you know different bone problems i forget what the old people get was it osteoporosis? Yeah, yeah, osteoporosis. There you go. There you go. Where they said you need to walk. Well, they <laughs> they tell older people, especially older women, to lift heavy because uh, it stresses the bones, and what that does is it activates those cells, yeah. which makes the bone stronger. So imagine your dog sitting up in the house all fucking day and wondering why it's falling apart. That dog got good, and there's times even now, you know, sometimes I don't get back and have enough time to 11, 12 o'clock, and I'm like my puppy, you know, Eco, he's got to get out. He's got to get out. So I'd be in the cold like, yo, we got to go do some work yeah. to make sure we accomplish something that day. But again, my dogs mean more to me than just sitting and looking at their ass. Yeah. I got them. I like protection work. I like training them. I like being around them. Well, not just that. They fucking love it. They, bruh, they, they want to work. They like, he see that thing? I mean, bruh, he's so focused it's, and his mom's the same way. Yeah. You know, but that's, that's my thing. Yeah, See, your, you guys think it might be, hey, I just want something like a pet all day. That ain't my thing. Well, here's the thing. You know, with anything that gets challenged because, uh, you know, anything you're doing that's changing the, the climate of a certain situation where people are a lot of comfortable and you're like, hey, I got to self-assess. Maybe I'm not doing what Trevor is saying that I should be doing. Well, he's fucking wrong, whatever. You know, at the end of the day, man, that self-assessment is so vital. You know, like I had to sit down and look in the fucking mirror almost every day since I've started this shit and go, whose fault is it? It's my fault. We suck today. Whose fault is it? Me, you know? Um, a lot of people like who get fucked over in contracts or get, you know, get screwed over in puppy deals, you want to blame that other individual, but you don't look at yourself and go, hey, did I put the contracts in hand? Did I Zoom the person? Did I go see the dog physically? Did right. I ask for certain questions that needed to be asked? And it's the thing, too, for y'all that do get bamboozled by a, a, a puppy salesman. You can't out hustle a hustler. You know, unless yeah. you're a hustler. So some of y'all think, oh, I'm finna get this dog. Get They're gonna give me half price. Then I'm gonna give them the first pup back. And then the dog turns to shit. You can't sell one fucking dog. Yeah. And it's because you didn't even know what to ask in the first place or what the, what the dog was gonna turn into. And they didn't have pedigrees and all this other stuff that you are missing the boat on. Yeah. And then you're like, damn, I got fucked in that deal. No, you fucked yourself. Yeah. Why do you think a lot of people have such a hard time recognizing that and actually holding them, themselves accountable? You know what's baffling to me? I think it's I think it's crazy, and I'm gonna answer that question. I think it's crazy that some people do it twice. You like, oh, you did the, you're a repeat offender, my guy. Um, it's it's one of those things where people want to live and die in their glory. Yeah. And we are we, we we've addressed pride before. Yeah. But when you put seven thousand, ten thousand, I I got on one of my guys this morning, and he's trying to get a dog back to a to a breeder who he got fucked over, but he fucked himself. Yeah. And he's trying to sell me on the idea that they told him. Mind you, he's like, y'all, when I'm just still, other dog has congenital epilepsy. Mm. She's no longer with us. I yeah. just want to give you the dog back, but I want my money back. So if I sell the dog, I'm going to sell it for such. They were like, well, if you keep it, we can do 15. We could stud it out for 15000 We You can make 15000 I said, bro, they still trying to get you? I said, look, now this is just sounding clown-like. Yeah. He don't like me telling him, well, Trey, they said I can get fifty. I said, here we go with that nigga gene. Yeah, I literally told him. I said that nigga gene, you you heard money again. I said, bro, you want to keep being in circus, being in circus, but I'm not gonna tell you it's okay. Yeah, we just walked down this road of truth. You call on my phone because you want the truth. Yeah, and I'm gonna tell you the truth. You want to keep surrounding yourself with buffoons and be a fucking fool. Yeah, but you gotta be better. And I said, if you start walking towards the truth, you need to live in that truth and quit lying to you. Let you gotta take the L. I said, you know what penance is? Yeah. He says, I am familiar with penance. I said, then you need to suffer from your decisions that you made. Put yourself to, as a man. You keep trying to get away with fucking murder, and I don't want to hear it. Yeah. I said, be fucking better. And I said, you might not want to hear it, but that's it. Yeah. That's it. I said, that's it. You need to stuff. You need to go to work. Then he's like, well, you know what? I'm slaying these uh, 
these these air things and you know I did 2800 last week I said so you think you're not gonna get up if you just keep hustling doing what you're doing yeah take that L my friend you did it to yourself yeah yeah and you know but I'm not as easy as that that's why he called my phone the truth is they call me because they like they want somebody to they want the gas but they like I need to call the truth real quick and get the facts I'm yeah. not gonna I'm not gonna paint you a pretty picture bro I told you you learned I said once you step into the light you can't claim darkness no more yeah and that's the difference. Some people love the fact that they social media allows them to hide behind the truth. Yeah. And and one thing I try to do on my page and everywhere I go is highlight the truth. And I've said many times why are Maya's pups less than Zara. Maya has a partial, uh, elongated, soft palate. Yeah. She has limitations. Yeah. Zara has none. Her son has none. Yeah. We, I can push him. He's only six months. It'd be unrealistic of me to sell you a dog who I know is going to give some gorgeous babies and be like, I can't vouch for them yet either. Yeah. I could vouch for every one of Zara's kids. So they said, well, that's a big price difference. Zara started five, Maya started three. Yeah. I'm being realistic. I'm not a fucking fool. And I don't give a shit about the money. I put the do- I really will put the dogs in everybody's homes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and keep them. And that's another thing too. Let's say like you are getting new to the game and you you make an investment and you actually get a bitch, right? And, yeah. And being able to go, let's say you have a stud, right? And you're like, for example, uh, you know, I have Bazooka. Yeah. And I have bravado, and most people will be like, "Let me put bravado with bazooka, right?" Just because I own both the dogs. They said, <laughs> well, "What's the best dog that's going to complement bazooka and eventually produce a better dog there down the go. road that maybe I could eventually take back to bravado if it complements and they, they they work together well?" And that just goes back to vision too, man. They gotta yeah. have a vision. They gotta read the stand. They gotta have breed. They gotta know what they're trying to achieve and not do things just because. Yeah. They think they could be some slick snake oil salesman. Yeah. And that's that's the other thing. So I love when people are like, and I told him that too. I said, listen, listen, my guy, I got a $7,000 dog in a buddy's home. I said, nobody's ever going to use him. And trust me, if I show people the pedigree, they would pay to use this nigga. Even if it's $1,500, mm. I could sell his shit at least once a month. Yeah. With my sales capability. Yeah. I said, but I don't even want nobody, I don't even want nobody to know I got him because he cannot, I'm not going to let him reproduce. Mm. He'll do something for us one time because I actually know how to use yeah. uh, his blood. But nobody else? I said, so, I said, you looked at it as I'm about to come up in the world, and I'm looking at it as I'm about to build the world. Yeah. And you know what, the difference between you trying to come up off your dogs and me building something? I'll take 7,000, 10, 14, yeah. and look at, hey, I'm going to put this somewhere and watch it manifest and grow, and then use it and really build the world Yeah. versus bullshit myself. And then start bullshitting people. I, but, you know, some of y'all get comfortable in your own shit and don't know it stinks. Yeah, I, so many people are playing the short term game, and, you know, and it just ends up fucking them in the long run, anyways, you know? Yeah, and, <laughs> and, you know, it, it's just the same thing I had to do with here. I had to look at different products and go, okay, this product isn't working. This product is working. You know, how would you fine tune this product and elevate and enhance it, you know? And, and then just going all in on that. But it took a lot of trial and error, even on the hiring side, you know? Like now I'm very transparent, you know, when we bring people in. It's yeah. just like, hey, listen. This is how it needs to be. If you can't do this and you're going to fuck up our culture, you cannot be a part of this. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and it, that, that was a very costly learning curve, you yeah. know? And, and I think, you know, and maybe you could talk about this for a second. I think for a short time, I, I feel this, and I don't know for facts, so don't yeah. quote me on it, but I feel like it, for a little bit you were interested in really wanting to be liked by people. Yeah. Especially, and then you said yourself, you brought in a lot of friends. Yeah. And friends who who, you know, you want to keep them happy or you want them to like what's happening, want everybody to feel good about things, don't always make things better. And here's the thing about x Talk people. I've been around and I should, before every meeting, I already had vests. This is a good product. Yeah. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't. I don't, I could go a lot of places and do a lot of shit and sit in a lot of rooms. When I started this, and I'm just painting a picture, I'm not a wealthy person by any means, but I just started a, a repurpose, come out of fitness space, started with the company in January this year. It's my first company I sold. They paid me $7,000, you know, just to be a part of their, build all their digital stuff out. Yeah. The first month, I started the business. Yeah. Some people can make $2, and then everything after that, I mean, I have fifteen dollars to $2,500 days, and some people want me at in their rooms and in their tables. And because of X-Talk, at this moment, I get to tell them no, because I just want to focus on dog shit, my own dog shit, and, you know, the stuff that he's doing here. So what is it like to go through the process of basically breaking away from being trying to be liked by everybody versus respected. Yeah, uh, how, I saw a quote today. And I, let's, let's try to rephrase it correctly. Like, um, you can be respected without being loved, but you can't be loved 
maybe it's the opposite. Maybe you can be loved without being respected, but you cannot be respected. I mean, you can be respected without love. You know yeah. what I mean? And understanding that you, that's, that's the whole thing. Yeah, of course I want to be liked, but learning to go, being able to say no. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, like being able to go, you know what? Like, I don't give a shit what people think. We're going to push this product. I believe in this product. I'm going to push it out there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, a lot of people, they see success and they're thinking, I don't want this person to be successful. I don't want them to have money because all they can think about is they want money and they feel like they deserve the money. And it was reframing that and going, okay, we had a clean house. We had to clear everybody out whose integrity and core values didn't fall in line with what we're doing. Like, when, for example, I used to have salesmen and saleswomen who would sell people a product that they didn't need. <laughs> that fucked me up. I didn't like that. You know, like I, mm -hmm. when people come to me, I don't even try to sell them a product. I try to solve their problem without my product. Yeah. And at the end of the day, they want to continue to do business because at the end of the day, like they can enhance what I just gave them because they're getting a result and they want to take it to the next level. They can take it to the next level. But this is the supplements and stuff won't matter. The, the, the product, the tool won't matter unless you actually put in the work and are committed to it. So if you're not willing to do this little step right here by making some changes and shit, it, 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 it was just uh, one of those things where it was like you're not going to get the result at the end of the day anyways, you know. And so... For me, like, yeah, of course I want to be liked, but at the end of the day, like now my, my vision's different. Like my, I have a purpose and you either can be part of that mission and part of that purpose or you don't have to be. You can be on outside of it. We can still be friends, but I'm not going to have the time for you because I'm chasing other shit right now, you know? And so, at the, you know, <laughs> fuck being liked, you know, like I, it's cool, but you know, like I don't have to be liked anymore. I, I'm more of a loner now, you know? Yeah. And you'll find peace and solidarity when you actually have a sense of self, people. Um, I, I can't stand that some people get lonely and bored and all that other stuff. It's like, oh, you don't, you're not doing enough with your life. Yeah. That, that's the other thing. And it's like, for me, just like you, you know, people are always on the phone. They're always in need and they need you to be you. Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, they, they don't even need nothing from you. Some people just need you to be you and they need you to be so certain about who you are that when they're questioning who they want to become as they're working through their shit, they call you for rein, to reinforce that I have to be a better fucking man or woman in this case. Well, you got to think about it, man. Dogs are not going to follow any other dog that's uncertain. No. Right? No. And that's why I love... I keep all the alphas with me. So my kennel, all the top dogs um, that have got that dog in them or that drive, they stay with me. Yeah. Everybody else. And that's not to say don't get the bad dog. They get the dogs they can work with. But I like them dogs uh, because I need a dog that can go. Yeah. <laughs> Period. That's, yeah. that's how I operate at least. Uh, because I'm always on the go. <laughs> yeah. You got to be, man. And so... When it comes to, again, let's, let's dial back and go back into the ABKC, what pivots do you think that they need to, to make? Because it seems like there's such a big inconsistency on, on the breed as a whole from producing a product that does well in the show ring compared to producing a product that uh, also sells well if you're in it for business-wise. You know what I mean? But, I don't, you know, I could tell you that I've listened to a lot of things from everybody and, you know, their, their issues, their challenges, their concerns with the, with the, with the head to their own dogs to the programs. I need to, so put it like this, from where I sit, I would tell the ABKC, give me your business model, let me take a look. Yeah. And from that, you'd be like, oh, this is fucked. But from the visual, if I'm, we were, st I'm standing in the ring, I did all the videos, you know, and it's not me to my horn, me and David talked about how it, they, they missed capturing one of the most precious moments like this is a big thing for his fucking family and team and nobody was there to catch had he not reached out six months ago he might have missed some of the stuff and he's still yeah. living off of it. then guess what he changed his page into a business page on ig and the videos from insights are doing numbers bar none to his photos because again now instagram's a video app so now you got to think hey if i really want my dog to be successful or for me to be successful my dog needs to be highlighted in a way. Yeah. So then going back to the ABKC, what is the ABKC actually doing for the dogs? Yeah. And the people investing in the ABKC or showing at the show, I didn't see anything. Yeah. I didn't, and I still ain't seen nothing. Well, I, you know, I used to deal with a lot, I still do, I, a lot of people who uh, do very well in the AKC show ring, right? Let's mm -hmm. say they had a stud that won best of breed, right? They're like, literally, like, they're trying to get me to help them pay for ads and stuff because they only have about six months and that dog is getting passed up. Over. Yeah. It's, this fight is over. Yeah. The hype train is gone, you gone. know? Which is why we got to leverage it. I mean, and I think, you know, I'm, I'm putting some stuff out there, but, you know, even David, him and I were having a good conversation. I think he just, he commented even on one of the things you posted, like, me and Travis got the phone, such as, I'm so excited. Yeah. And he goes, yo, boss, is there some type of books? I said, David, we're past that. 
I said, you can't go back now. Yeah. <laughs> I said, we got to build it. I said, here's the thing. You're on planet Pluto and everybody's still on Earth. Yeah. Nine out of ten people will never know what it's like to win ABKC Best and show everything. American book, the best, whatever. I said, so if, if I gave you books and things to prepare you for the moment you're living in now, yeah, it would be over. Yeah. You'd never get started. I said, so and by, by I gave him this. Hey, by the 15th, boom, I'm going to have this done. You need to get this done. Then when we go into showing them over all this stuff, these things is so we can create transaction. Mm -hmm. they not helping with this stuff. No. And, and and he's very honest, along with a lot of people I've helped over the years. Hey, I don't really know where to begin. I don't know what the plan should look like. Well, thank God I, I, I've got sensibility and can help you develop a strategy. And then we can figure out what works and what doesn't. But step one, step one, step two, step three. And even this, you know, you guys are going to hear this. But again, last night, hey, me and my wife will sit down and really go through yeah. the questions you said. I sent him 15 intense questions about identity, brand identity, brandability, brand this. And with the branch, all this other stuff. Because now it's got to be bigger than Martinez Bulls. Yeah, because he's got to figure out if how far does he want to take it on a mm -hmm. personal level. Because you got to look at a lot of, like, for example, we deal with a lot of influencers. But I have a lot of friends who have businesses that deal with different influencers as well. Who just base all their shit off their looks and their beauty with no substances, you know. <laughs> and they'll, they'll jump from brand to brand to brand, whoever's going to pay them more. Not really believing in the product. But eventually, right, the... Eventually, your beauty goes away. Yeah. Right? You're depreciating asset, people, just so you know. There's There were some models 10 years ago that I don't even see them around anymore. There's nothing to look at. <laughs> There's nothing to look at, you know? And so, these dogs are a product and they're a brand. So, how can you build off that brand is the big question, you know? And how are you going to leverage it? And how are you going to take it to the next level, you know? Are you going to keep producing pup after pup thinking that you're going to win it every every year, you know? Yeah. That's um, hard. And, and to keep in mind, if even if he did, guess what? That's still bare minimum a twenty thousand dollar investment every year. He believes he has a dog that can win. So if in in five years he's outwards of hundred grand. You know some people don't even make a hundred thousand dollars a year. Matter of fact, the average is fifty thousand dollars a year. Yeah. So now you you spending more money than you making to show a dog to get nothing from it. Yeah. Outside of self glorification. And at the end of the day, investment is an investment, but yeah. it, you only get an ROI if you take the action and, and leverage it, right? Absolutely. And application is key. So you know that's that's kind of where I'm uh, I'm helping. I know Stan's helping as well. Together, as I said, I think we can help him and a few others put themselves in position to really be successful long term. Yeah. Not a short. It's not a short investment. Um, and what we're trying to help them achieve. So let's say you're in the game, right? And you, you're talking about dogs and you, you get this dog and you think it's the shit. What, what's your steps? Do you go to somebody and go, give me an honest opinion? Like somebody you respect and say, give me an honest opinion about this dog? Um, I think for one, you go to the show ring and see how the dog fares. Mm. And then you get a perspective. You see, yeah. you, I would say always do up to three shows yeah. to get a feel for your dog's uh, compatibility, mm -hmm. um, its comfort. Yeah. It's it's ability to show, wanting to show in the ring. Yeah. All that stuff. And then if you think you might be onto something, you might go see a professional like Hannah mm -hmm. or or whoever else. Yeah. That's really good and say, Hey, what do you think, uh, Kara? What yeah. do you think of this dog? Do you think I could push this dog? Yeah. And they too will be like, Yes or no. Yeah. I'm sure they'll be yes or no, because at the end of the day, whether you pay them or not, it's their time. Yeah. It's their time. So step one is to get out, show your dog, get you get you a feel for it, see if you like the space mm -hmm. and putting your dog under that type of stress even. Yeah. Or if it's if it thrives under that level of pressure. Yeah. And then go and say, Now well, let me see how far I can take this thing. Yeah. And put it into a professional person's hands and get a view. You know, there's a lot of when you talk about gaslighting, when you look on some of these Facebook pages, <laughs> there's a lot of fucking gaslighting going yeah. on. I, I, if I had a dollar for every time I seen someone go, damn, that dog is fire, right? And I, 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 I think it'd be want people to say that about my dog. I just want a good dog, man. Yeah, a good quality dog that can live. Like but I think that really fucks up the community because it does. people really feel like they're they're going in the right direction. You know, bro, I'm already knowing, man. I'm already knowing. But again, when you start talking about a like they say, this is a companion breed. Yeah. My companion should be able to walk with me. Yeah. Should be able to travel with me. Should be able to do quite a few things. Mm. Blue can do that, which is why he's been all over the U.S. Dooley can do that. Yeah. Fortuna can do that. These yeah. are personal dogs. Are personal. I don't know everybody's dog. I'm guessing Zero can do that. I don't know them like that, but clearly he travels as well. Yeah. But well, I think he's going to uh, the Euro Nationals. There you go. So I'm. This is me saying, look. I don't have a stake in this game, and I'm telling you right now, I ain't putting a stake in this game. I potentially will show a dog. And have somebody else do it, but I could give a shit if I want to lose. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just doing it for the sake of building up a better part of you know building a community up. Yeah, but I ain't shitting on nobody's dog. So, and I don't care what y'all doing. I'm just like, am I inspired? I'm sorry. 
<laughs> why, do you, why do you think that probably offends some people? I think a lot of people, and here's my opinion on it, I think it's because a lot of people put a lot of time and effort. And it's, really, it's really tough to get that, that pill, you know, where you're like, you have to swallow that bitter pill where it's like, I invested a lot of time, a lot of effort I, I, it, to just to be told, no, I'm not inspired. Your shit sucks. Um, that's I that's mean, the nature of the beast, I right? Mean, look, that's, look I can, I'm a business junkie. And so when you think, I don't, you guys, I've watched every interview possible. Everything you probably could never find on Steve Jobs. So much so that when Ashton Kitcher played his role as Steve Jobs, I walked out of the movie and told him to give my money back. I said, that's not Steve Jobs. <laughs> now, they have a movie called Jobs where my guy, my British guy, murders the fucking role. Mm. That's Jobs. Yeah. But that's how offended I was when Ashton Kitcher tried to emulate yeah. the Steve Jobs I have re researched. And I'm telling you this to say... That when he left, slash got put out of Apple, sold all but one share, he was hurt for a long time. Hurt. Cool. Hurt. So think about Did you story. imagine that? I, could, I, I couldn't, but I, I, everybody learned from that. Yeah. Zuckerberg owned everything. His old 50% plus. Yeah, the rest of everybody else was like, we never given up that much power. Yeah. So they, they learned from him. And then what did he do? He sold himself back to Apple and changed the world. But my point is, is you're going to go through some losses, people. Mm-hmm. You know, Elon put his last six million dollars. Six million dollars sound like a lot to y'all, but if it's the last six million dollars you got, it's the same as the two dollars you might have in your account if it's your last. Yeah. With hopes of making Tesla along with SpaceX and other things he was doing work. Mm. You, you you know, so in y'all's mind, y'all might be giving it y'all all, but if you don't even even if you never given them, you know, you don't even know what your all looks like, then you're being unrealistic. And I tell you, a dog's not the answer to your prayers. Yeah. It is a stepping stone nine out of ten times, especially if you even buy one for somebody to go into the right direction. David created blue. He bred and, and built blue. Fred took damn near 10, 15 years to produce Doobie, Fortuna and them. That's a seven year process in itself. None of the dogs I believe that are in that ring just got there overnight. There are years that went into it. So if somebody's telling you you got such and such and, and you, they lying to you if, if you don't have a process and I'm a process a people process like Marcus Lemonis, the prophet, and then product person. Show me your process. I love meeting the people. And then I can tell you if there's an opportunity here. And the opportunity always lies within the truth. And can we be realistic? Yeah. And, and, and realistic, reality sets in when you start losing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, the truth is, it's like, again, man. It ain't relative. I'm going to tell you that yeah. right now. It ain't fucking relative. It's fucking the facts. And it ain't always nice to your ear, but it's the truth. You well, know? See, that's the problem with, with, with everybody who thinks, look, for a tree to, to grow, there are going to be some bad branches. Yeah. If there's apples on the tree, there are going to be some bad apples. Now, you cut them down. But for everything good, there is something bad. Yeah. All you have to do is be understanding of that, mm -hmm. and you can grow and learn from it. Mm -hmm. So to assume that I, I tell people, I don't have the best dogs. Not right yeah. now. Yeah. And even when I got them. I'll still be working on tightening up a few more things because yeah. it'll never. And the same thing with whether it's our bodies, whether it's our business. If Amazon still sold books, it would not be here today. My buddy works at a facility Fast. that does four million boxes a week, and they don't even ship boxes that are over twenty five pounds at one facility here in Dallas. And there's like three or four. If he still sold books, he had to grow, right? So why is it that in the dog community, y'all think y'all got to grow? That's kind of crazy, and you make it right. Like so, for example, like. How many businesses has Amazon just literally crushed because they weren't willing to evolve? Or or they bought them. But yeah, a, a shit ton to be clear. You bought Zappos years ago. Whole Foods. Whole Foods. Found a winner. They, they offered, um, you know, even when you spent $240 uh, on buying the Washington Post. They said, why would you do that? He said, yeah, you don't really need it. But he thought that there was a better way to do, you know, micro micro information mm. because of, he said the Washington Post should be preserved. It's been around here for a long time. Yeah. And I think that I could help deliver information, you know, in whatever way that looks like. Yeah. And they said, hey, are you going to control what comes out? He says, no, they've been doing their job for a long time. I'm going to help improve the operations because that's what Amazon is. It's an yeah. operation fucking monster. Yeah. I mean, think about that. The fucking shit they do and everything else. I mean, even now they're streaming, you know? There you go. And like, you know, even Netflix, they, they fucking Blockbuster Cinema Sync laughing at them. And now y'all, nine and ten of y'all never even hear a Blockbuster. Uh, Redbox and the rest of them, you know, then these people basically created a better process to deliver. So everything has to grow and everything changes. It's constant. Yeah. Which means the dogs are either going to improve or you're going to do them in. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to put yourself, you're going to break yourself into a corner, you know? Yeah. And, um, 
not being able to evolve in anything in life, man, it's, you're, you're going to get screwed. I, that's why I always try to keep fresh minds around, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's – how many times did we hear or did you hear that, you know, it's good – it's great to have a fresh set of eyes. Yeah. But it was always from somebody who was, like, wanting to evolve. Yeah, and, and I, those comments on some of those videos that, that were shared via Facebook, they really appreciate the perspective I provided Yeah, and capturing some of those moments that they have basically never had, mm. not in that degree at the ABKC Nationals. And in my head, I'm like, this is like normal to me. Yeah, <laughs> and, you know, going back about being liked, you know, I think that's another big problem. I think everybody wants to be in, in this game to be be liked by everybody. But like you and I, we made it. We made it true. So like, look, we're going to be honest and we're going to have integrity. If you, we're not going to be for everybody. Yeah, you, you know? got to be. You got to be clear about that. And that's kind of like understanding your market as well. Trying to make everybody fucking happy. You're not going to do it, man. No, no. But we can help and you know, hopefully, make some people better. You know how many times I, I, I'm going to launch a color or a pattern and, and the person goes, well, you know, if you came out with Coyote Tan, we'll buy it. Well, motherfucker, like, I got to produce fucking, you know, 2,500 vests just so you can buy one. You're not going to influence it. You know, we're always no. going to go move towards something that's going to, again, where the majority of people are going to buy it. At the end of the day, it's a business, you know, and, you know, there's some colors I don't like, but we've launched them, you know. And you know what's crazy is I, I used to do a lot of... Uh, I spent some time doing even telling people about that in the relationship. I said, some of y'all are relationships that are dying because you got no business plan. Yeah. And they said, what you mean? I said, think about it like this. You got with somebody, got comfortable, you got complacent, and no interest is growing. Well, business interest has to grow. Yeah. And as you get more interested in the money and your bottom line, then you could do more with your time. Yeah. And so you improve your real estate, which means your mind first. Yes. Now, my mind thinks in more complex ways, and I need to have those conversations with somebody who I believe in and trust and want to be with and can grow from. Yes. So y'all motherfuckers get comfortable with somebody and then wonder why the relationship is stagnant well you have no plan you have no vision you have no goal and I, I tell somebody this before the day you find purpose is more important than the day you say I do because Ooh. before God gave a man a woman he gave him purpose and it is easy for a woman to even adopt your last name yeah. when a man has purpose they don't want no broke nigga or broke fool or whatever else but man need purpose a woman need purpose uh -huh. and it can't just be to bear no kids and yeah. do some shit for fun so all this stuff goes into everything that I do and faith is a foundation of my being so I'm no quarrel with people yeah. I have no issue with y'all doing to these dogs um, and the issue I do have my, my way in which of solving it is to breed things that I believe can be better Yeah, set an example that's yeah. the best way to do it and like I said I ain't arguing with nobody <laughs> <laughs> who has time for it you know? no not me <laughs> but a lot of people make time for it Trevor it's, it's, oh, it's just man. crazy how much time you know like, like not entertaining that shit was one of the best things I've ever done you know like block <laughs> block block and then they try to leverage and go oh he's only blocking because I'm telling you no I'm blocking you because I don't need that fucking energy near me you can't you're not even on the same fucking level of my <laughs> way of thinking to even entertain that you know and so it's, it's one of those Socrates said that as well it's I can't I'm not even gonna paraphrase what he said but it's it's, it's a real good quote if you find it and it talks about basically arguing with the person who uses vulgarity because they basically resort to that when they are frustrated due to oftentimes the lack of literacy yeah. and the ability to communicate within themselves. Yeah. So it, it is a whole thing. And as you probably can tell, you know, Stan and myself are well versed in communication. Um, one of my kids, I talked to him last night, he said, you know what, I'll always follow you, boss, because you can literally talk to everybody the same. Yeah. I watch you talk to everybody and everybody give me. He said, you talk to the janitor. I'm like, even the janitors enjoy this guy. Like, you yeah. were talking to them about sanitation. I said, bro, my grandma cleaned houses for 35 years. I helped her every summer. Yeah. I walked in out of white folks' homes and, and took care of stuff. I'm like, I, I know how to do a, you know, such and such fold, a hospital fold on the back. Yeah. I said, bro, I didn't been everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I said, it see. But that's the truth, though. You do talk to everybody the yeah. way you talk to them, you know? Like, yeah. impact. I, yeah. Impact. I live and die by impact. My mom. People are like, please don't go in there and say nothing. I said, I'm just, I didn't even know what he does. Like, yeah. So you only make sandwiches, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And dude be like, well, I want to save up $11,000 to to buy an alien. I really like computer. If I had the money to go, one of my goals in, in putting myself in position is to help the average everyday Joe. And I don't mean giving the money. I mean giving the resources. Like, hey, he wants to build computers. I, I got a team. Yeah. Just here's $11,000. Here's a check. Go buy everything you need. You gonna call These people going to call you. You can come report here and we go help you build a drink. Like yeah. that's the place I want to personally be in. So I yeah. really don't give a shit what nobody says because I got enough of the right people. And if you don't know nobody wealthy, and I mean wealthy in spirit, then you wouldn't understand no way because they don't give a shit about what your money. They only care about the opportunity to grow and learn with you from you and, and to work with you. 
I mean, I think you, you hit it right on the head. Like mentality and mindset is everything because how many times have you seen somebody or heard a story where somebody won the lottery and they don't fucking have nothing to show for it? You still have the same habits, you know? Yeah. Like I've had people who used to, you know, used to be employed here thinking that they were going to go out and do the same things I did, right? In a different perspective, but they didn't have the mindset because they didn't change the habits that they had. They weren't willing to evolve, you know, and, and change those habits. So they're just going to carry those habits over. Absolutely. And so they're like, are, are you worried about it? No. And I'm not worried about it. Who try to run from something like, bro, you running from it, but it's in your head. Yeah. You can't outrun your mind. <laughs> yeah. And that and that's the whole fucking thing, man. It's just like, you know, a lot of people get uncomfortable around me a lot of times because it's just one of those things where I'm going to challenge you. And if you can't handle being challenged by me, I can't help you grow. And if I can't help you grow, then I, you can't help me grow because that's what moves the needle for me. You know? And so, too, man, I literally, back in the day, the kids used to say, when I used to train at this box, they would say, kid, new come to me, he say, oh, here comes the questions. I said, guys, I'm just trying to make sure he's in for the right reasons. <laughs> I can't help him if he has no dream. And if, yeah. you know, they didn't have no college dream or collegiate dream. Yeah. I said, bro, go work out at 24. Go work out. This ain't the place where they about to be in here by eight hours. My yeah. God. Doing thousands and thousands of reps, no exaggeration. Yeah. So if you don't got that mentality, you're going to break after the warm-up. Believe me. Yeah. You know, this past weekend, we all, I don't know if you got to watch it, but they watch, you know, um, Jake Paul and, and Tyrone Woodley. You I know the highlights. Well, you know. <laughs> Tyrone, like he earned a lot of respect, not by the knockout, but what was what he did yesterday. He's paying someone five thousand dollars to produce the best meme of him being knocked out. Mm -hmm. and it's like that motherfucker's genius because he knows that how relevant and how much he's going to be talked about and the ROI and the algorithms and how much that's going to be paid off, you know, in yeah. the long run. And guess what? Jake is like, hey, I kind of want to bring this guy on. This is fucking genius, you know. And Jake gets a lot of criticism. But no one goes, hey, he's not in the gym every fucking... The guy all day is in the fucking boxing ring training. Um, he's got a new organization right now where he's refurbishing gyms and, and rebuilding gyms. Uh, and these people never even thought they could have possibly happened. You know, they can't go to the bank and probably get a loan. You know, a lot of... The boxing is a poor man's sport. I, I was is. involved in it. It's just a poor man's it sport, is. you know? It is. It's, it's always the stinkiest place on earth. <laughs> Yeah, it, and, and it got never got enough equipment. It's like it is a passion play, people. Yeah, you know anything about boxing? They fucking love it or hate it, but they do it out of love. Yeah, because ain't nobody getting paid doing no boxing like that unless you're at the top. Yeah, and so he he's got it right now. You know, like Jake, he's always going after the UFC because he knows it's going to bring headlines in the MMA community. Jake Paul's going after Dana White. If you notice, Logan Paul and, and Dana are really cool, you know? And so they understand the game and, and how that works. And, yeah. and so does Dana. Dana goes, I like having him as a rival because he may talk shit back to him, but in his head, he's like, that's more eyes on our brand and our product. Like and All publicity is good publicity. They own all their shit. And that's <laughs> the most important thing. Like, Jake controls his contract. What he's mm -hmm. doing in a boxing match fighting a no-name, it's almost kind of like a blueprint on how Mayweather was when he kind of started hand-selecting his... His, his, uh -huh. You know, of course you want to see him go against the most challenging person. You want to see him get beat. But on the business side, it's just not, it's a business. That's the part. Look, hey, he like this, man. I ain't in that business of getting my head knocked off. Who is? I'm in the business of making the dollar bill. And he said, Wolf Floyd said, I'm the best at legally robbing the banks. Yeah. That's, what he, that's what he literally, I got a clip, save my phone off TikTok from that shit. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, people, you got to figure that part out. And that's the part where you take pride out of the equation and you come up with some strategies and then you choose who you want to be and you execute that every fucking day. Yeah. And for me, my dogs are going to help me do that. Believe me, this whole Fit Bully thing, we going in. We going yeah. in. And I, again, I'm not... I don't, I don't argue with people. I've, I've got my own vision. I don't read comments. I, even when he said, call me the sports, he says, hey, I'm like, oh, really? I would have never known. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know either. <laughs> yeah, that's the know? thing. So, and it's good that they call because this is what feeds things like this. This is what we're here for, to have discussions, healthy conversation. And mind you, bring on more people to talk about real shit that they might be going through in the dog game that you're unaware of because they only promoting the, 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 the highlight of the great stuff. And trust me, it's a shitty fucking world. It's a shitty fuck. All we do is pick up poop all day. Yeah. Like if you're a breeder, you just pick up shit. You're glorified to pick up shit every fucking day. Dog. That's it, it. I'm not even, I don't consider myself a breeder at all, and it's fucking exhausting sometimes. Yeah. You know, just I having went four to dogs. I bed last night, and the, the dog shit four times while I was sleeping. I woke up from the shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this bitch shit? It's yeah. fucking shit here, here. I'm like, man, this bitch got to go back in her cage, but I'm trying to teach her to yeah. use the pads. But, bro, I'm talking on E. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy because I love having a bunch of dogs, but fuck dude, at times I'm just like I'm a one dog person. You know? It'd be a lot easier to have be a one dog person. Yeah, you know? but it is, man. You know, 
<laughs> Who knows why, but yeah, I, I own fucking four dogs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got about eight of them boogers. Three of them stay with And right now, just three. I put them. It's just and more coming. That's the problem. We got a literal. I mean, it's just too much. Yeah, it's too much. Uh, so, but yeah. So, so yeah, look, people, get over yourself. I've been. Yeah. It, it might sound like it even might sound like we're into ourselves. But you know what? I'm the most honest person about me, and I'll be the first person to tell you I ain't shit. But I'm working on get, being better every day. You know, when I heard that information this morning, I, I told him like because they didn't know how to tell me. You know, because like, oh, that, you know, Trevor's your boy. Like, listen, dude, I was like, he ain't gonna fucking apologize. I'm gonna tell you that off top, and this is who he is. And, that's just what it is and that's one of the reasons why i like him and i can like being around him and that's why we work well together and um you know like you know for a long time i would get messages from people showing me things of what other people said and in my head i'm like what, what would you say did you, uh, you know what i'm saying yeah what'd you say about it you know like because it, like don't be that type of person sending screenshots of what other people say like no one's got time for that shit you're like get that fucking get that shit away from me you know and so i started cutting that off even like dude i because nobody brings me i literally tell the people that i help even jamar you yeah. know i said you guys around me all day i said how many bad phone calls do i get yeah i said none Pit motherfucker, my mama know not to call me with no shit. Yeah. I don't have I don't have the space. You start talking shit. I don't even want to live there. Yeah. I don't give a shit about what nobody else is doing with me. Yeah. And I had to tell the story of like a if if, if you were talking to an Elon type guy, yeah. you'd be like, Oh, he didn't pay me enough attention. You know where that man's head's at? Yeah. You know where <laughs> Kanye's head's at? Yeah. You know where they're thinking they're thinking about twenty fifty and you talking about this one fucking moment? Yeah. Because they didn't acknowledge you? Yeah. Fuck out of here, man. Yeah, nobody you got time for that shit. No, nobody got so And I live in the same space. I'm either creating, talking, working on something, building something, learning something. Yeah. And be, or with my dogs. Yeah. And normally there's a dog with me. So yeah. So I'm always with the dogs. So you, and, like, and I learned very, very young. One of the most draining things on earth are people. Yeah. And if you ever want peace... And you say, God, man, I need, I need some more peace. The first thing you gonna do is remove some of them fucking people out of your life. Yeah, and you got to be okay with that too. Not everybody's gonna be with you for the entire journey, man. You know, that's just the. Some of them shouldn't have been there, been there when you started. Yeah, they're all learning curves. You know, a lot of people go through different challenges, and you're gonna deal with problems, but your problems don't go away. We always talk about that. Your problems mm -hmm. just get bigger and different. That's it. They, but, they, they change and change their face. Yeah, same shit with a different face. Yeah, I've literally told somebody I've been to Arizona. I said, oh, I've met you before. They go, What do you mean? I said, You a sucker. <laughs> <laughs> you a sucker, boy. I bet you, cause I good. I'm real good about reading energies. I'm like, yeah, oh, you a sucker, bro. I, look, I've been in some awful gonna happen, but yeah. you stay away from me, man. Exactly. <laughs> you stay away from me. I'm not about. Well, I just talk. No, 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 no. Listen, just stay away. Yeah, I ain't got the patience for it, man. I'm really um, big on time and, yeah. and the value of time and how I want to spend my time and, and uh, utilize my time. Most importantly, yeah. And you know, I think you know, Nationals for us was a time where both of us. Uh, saw that the things that for one and X talk uh, that are going on are taking place are yeah. going in the right direction. Pure good energy, pure love, pure just people who had never even done podcasts. They were, they came out the woodworks. They gave us conversations. Some of them have been users of the of the brand and everything. So I'm supposed to go back and argue with the four people, yeah. the five people, and all 25 of they folks. Stop it. Yeah, you're just not paying my bills, man. You're not gonna outvalue us, anyways, and so period. If, you just can't. If you're you going shoot better than me for one, they never gonna let you in, no way. Yeah, and so if you get out there, man, you think you're gonna hate and it's gonna cause any problems. Ask yourself this question first: Can I outvalue them? If I can't outvalue them, which then you're gonna have to be fucking self honest. Can you really outvalue us? Yeah, and valuing what we got, people, is what we fucking give. Don't forget that. Yeah. I got even. I can show you the mess. I put the messes up different. David, he said, man, you help me. He said, you ain't even asked for things. Ask for a dolly. I said, I don't give a fuck about that. Yeah. I said, if we build this right, we'll, be, we'll all be straight. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, what the fuck? Man? And, but the, everybody's so used to paying up front. I need this and that. I said, I've got nothing to prove. And I mean, I can prove that I can do what I said I'm going to do. Yeah. Because we've got the, he's got the footage. Yeah. But I'd rather take the time. And I told him, I want you to have invested interest. So I need you to do the work. So yeah. you really see what's happening. That way you know when we do get there, yeah. first month you do $3,000. It's going to be a wake-up call for you. Yeah. Now quantify that times 10. Yeah. Now we're at 30. Yeah. Now let's see if we can do $10,000 a month. I said, yeah. I said it, but it's the little things. I said, 3000 ain't that much. He said, no. I said, now imagine putting the infrastructure in play to do three, I have a $3,000 a month. Yeah. I said, with the 30% you know, margin on that. you know, mm -hmm. and, and then they don't talk like this, mm -hmm. but this is how I think. Yeah. And it don't cost much to have a conversation. If you do believe in somebody, support them. So when, again, when you say the value, 
I'm on the phone with these with these people all the time. Yeah. <laughs> we talk all the time. I'm texting them, boom, boom, boom. They know how I am, and they know I'm here for the right reasons. And I, I told Stan this too. I, said, I ain't got no, I ain't got no interest in the game, man. I'm just here to help. Yeah. That's it. Like I don't, I don't need it. I got my own plans and own dreams, um, yeah. and I'm happy to help others build theirs. I could stop today and go build whatever I want to build and be okay building that shit because I know people would give me an endless amount of money to build, and I could give it back to them. But I like what's going on here at Xstar, so well, thing, I want to be here. The thing is, is that you know the network is so important. You know, like for example, Josh came here yesterday. You know, I don't have to talk to him every day, and mm -hmm. we can pick up. And if I need something, he knows I'm going to need something. And it's going to be a reason and a purpose behind yep. it. And and that's the thing. A lot of motherfuckers just waste people's time. You know, like you know, simplify your shit. When I ask a question, send me a simple a simple answer back. Don't send me a goddamn book. You know. <laughs> Like, I hate that shit. And so, you know. One man said in 15 pages of test. I said, boy, uh, I called. Motherfucker, what did you say? I mean, my kids, I call them my kids. They, they say, look, boss, I know you don't like long tests. I told long time. I said, bro, if it's a paragraph, I said, I'm not replying. Yeah. I'm not. That's why even I screenshot shit to send you because I'd be like this. I ain't about to, hey, guess what so and so said? Yeah. Click, boom, you see for yourself. Yeah. And I'm be like, I can't do it, man. Because <laughs> you got to learn how to value people's time as well, man. You know, like anybody who's successful don't have very much time. And so you no. got to keep that in mind. You know, no. like and we, and we have plans for our life so we don't get up and wander around all day. Every day is driven by purpose and a goal. Yeah. If not goals. Yes. And those goals have to be executed. Otherwise, motherfucker like me cannot sleep. If I do less, than the bare minimum. Yeah. And in my minimum, would we'll kill some of y'all's maximum. Like, y'all like, ooh, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm just, warm. we just waking up, man. We still got <laughs> eight hours ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so, <laughs> well, man, I hope you guys found some value in this episode. Please like it, share it, you know, tell your friends about it. Um, you know, if you found any golden nuggets, then, you know, definitely, man, just don't just fucking just share it, man. Actually, do a post, do a story, tag us, you know, like, really get this information out here. We're doing this. For free to offer you guys value. Yeah. I mean, pay the fee, man. It's 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 nothing to you to to do that. And so, leave us a review. Um, you have a, if you want us to go over a topic again, leave us a review. Talk about what you want us to go over, and um, that helps us out. Helps spread the message. So, man, um, any last words? No, 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 people. Look, I'm not your enemy, and I'm not trying to be your friend either. To be clear, uh, but I am here for the dogs, and just like anything in business, uh, I serve a higher calling. Yeah, and that calling in terms of purpose has nothing to do with anybody but me and my maker. So if I rub a few people the wrong way, trust me, it's not intentional because I'm not even thinking about you when I make a choice. I think about what needs to get done. Yeah. That's that. So, you know. <laughs> well, that's how we do it around here. So <laughs> as always, thank you again. And Team X Dog Strong. All right, that's episode. <laughs>